All right, welcome back to Plastic Models by a Regular Dude and the Plastic Models for Beginners building from a photo with the Tamiya M10. Where I left off is I had uh, pretty much all of the construction done except for the parts I leave off for uh, painting. Now, um, I was waiting for some parts, namely the um, grousers. The wheels I'd already gotten here and so the only other parts I was waiting on were the grousers and the, um, I also ordered some uh, tie downs which I'll show you here in a second but first I want to show you the grousers now I looked around for grousers and there were some available in photo etch but I didn't think they'd look right because they're just too flat and I just didn't really um, didn't really have a place to get them. So I did some looking around, and I found on Shapeways, which is a 3D printing service, uh, 1 35th scale grousers, and here they are. Now I haven't cut any off yet, but you can see that they uh, they look pretty good. Now it's kind of hard to tell because they're made out of this kind of semi clear. Um, plastic so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, take one off and prime it just to see what they look like but just in looking at them here with the naked eye they look really good and you order them they're not very much they're pretty pretty cheap actually um, you get a total of 30 grousers which is uh, apparently what the normal amount issued per vehicle was um, now, looking at the photograph that I'm using, if they had a full uh, stack of grousers on each rack, the way they're situated on this vehicle in a vertical uh, fashion instead of horizontal, the maximum that um, will fit is 24. So I'll have a few extras. So anyway, I was waiting on those, got those. Then I also needed... Uh, some of the uh, tie downs for the turret now the ones on the turret as you can see here are molded on so in tying down uh, the packs and stuff like that it just really wouldn't look like it should so as you can see I've already trimmed some off and uh, I'm not going to trim them all off. I'm just going to trim off the, the ones that will be visible. Uh, because the stowage, you know, there's going to be a lot of stowage hanging in front of it. And I only really need to see the ones where you can actually see the tie-down straps, you know, tied around the tie-down bars. So what I wanted to use for that um, was Photo Edge because I figured that would look the best. And Voyager model makes some photo etch sets um, make some photo etch sets that have them in it but it also has a whole bunch of extra parts and it's kind of a waste to get that much stuff when you're not going to use it all so I was able to find oddly enough on uh, M&M Hobbies they have just the hooks themselves and it's 400 pieces so that will last a good nice quantity of US vehicles so I went ahead and got this like I think it was like eight bucks for the whole set and uh, as you can see there's a ton of them and they look really good just looking through the package here so with those two items and the additional purchase of some uh, angle plastic from Evergreen, some styrene. I can make the rest of the racks for the grousers. I'll have to put some uh, bars across here for them to mount on. So with all that, I can get back to, uh, I can put these parts on the turret and the angle iron here I can get all that done 
and uh, be ready to uh, start priming. So I'm going to start working on some of these and come back. Okay, so I am doing these little crab or uh, tie down uh, tie down hooks. They're not really hooks; they're bars. I don't know what to call them. I always go blank. But I'm doing the tie downs for the side of the turret. Now I've cut off the amount I need for one side, and as you can see, I have some here that are already shaped. So here is how I'm doing it, and this is just a suggestion, and it is quite uh, nerve-wracking, especially if you've, you know, had any coffee in the last six months. Um, so you get the handle, cut it off of the fret. Right here is a little, um, pattern, template, jig, uh, to help you shape the handle itself so it shows you how to shape the jig itself uh, you fold it one way and then fold it back over the other way kind of you know like this and smash down so you have this handy little jig then you cut the handles off and I'm going to attempt to show you how I'm doing this okay so first I take the handle and I drop it a number of times and I pick it up again and then I try again so what I do is I lay it across the jig very carefully and there are two sides to these things one side is smooth and one side is kind of a um, the ends the rounded end is kind of a almost a button looking thing okay so I get a place like that, I center it like that. Then I take my finger and I just smash it down like that. And what that does is give you the basic shape. It's not really square, but it is bent. So it helps with the next step, which is to set it across like that, recenter it. Thusly, then taking your tweezers and making them just a little bit wider than the jig, press it down like that. Et voila, you have a nice little tie down. So that's the way I do it. And that is also why I'm not cutting all of them off. I'm only cutting off the plastic ones that you will see. Because I don't want to have to do any more than I absolutely have to. So anyway, that's how I'm doing it. I'm going to continue making these. Then I'll glue them on to the actual turret. And after much weeping and gnashing of teeth, hopefully you'll end up with something like this. Was it worth it? Yeah, I think so. It didn't take too awful long once I figured out how to bend them and uh, how to steady my hand to uh, super glue them on. One one thing that I would recommend if you do this, this worked for me. Some other people have just no problems putting this kind of stuff on a on a model. Not me. It's just harrowing. Uh, what I do is I take the the little handle. I don't have one. Catch it right in the middle of the hump, and I only. I use I put a, a little bit of thin super glue right there just touch one side to it put it in position let it set just for a second while you know it's in in the right in the correct orientation and then let go of it put them all on like that and then I have this little super glue applicator I made here out of a, uh, a needle that I cut the tip off so where it's more like a fork I just touch it in there and then the other side, I just touch it right where it's contacted and it will actually seep underneath and cement it into place nice and solidly. So that's the way I did it. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other side, work on some more of this. 
All right, the uh, turret is done as far as the tie down points. Uh, I put on the ones that I am going to use. I didn't do these here because they're going to be covered up, but they're really nice and I like them. They're real tiny and as some people say fiddly, but uh, they really work and I think once it gets painted up it's going to look good. Now, as you can see, there's places where they don't exactly line up, you know, and that's at least they don't line up the same on both sides. But um, that's one of those things where if you look at the vehicles themselves, rarely are they all perfect, you know. So if you kind of get them just a little bit crooked and they're a little bit bent looking, maybe don't sweat it because it's an armored vehicle and there's damage that happens and they're putting these things together to get on the front. So some of this stuff isn't going to be exactly perfect, so don't sweat it. And once you get all kinds of gear and stuff like that, it's not going to matter anyway. So anyway, there's that. So the next part I'm going to work on is I'm going to make the uh, the railings uh, for the grousers uh, on the sides here. And uh, um, I have one of the grousers here. And I'm going to get it up close here and see if you can see it. Yeah, you can see it pretty good. But the detail looks really good, and it's a 3D printed item. So, uh, I don't know, I think it's going to work pretty good. But you'll be able to see it a lot better once I get some primer and paint on it. But uh, I just wanted to cut one off and let you see what it looks like. But it does look really good. And it does have some really nice detail on the inside as well. Um, so I think they're going to work out really well. But for now, I need to uh, build the rack for the side. So I'm going to monkey around with that a little bit and figure out how I'm going to approach it. And then I will come back. Okay, here is what I have come up with um, using some uh, angle styrene. I just made it real simple and I cemented uh, two strips, uh, top and bottom, in order to make an approximation of what it will look like once the grousers are put into position. I can't really tell from this photo how they're mounted. Um, so I just had to use some, you know, guesstimation. And I looked online, I couldn't find any better photos of uh, this type of, of mount on any of the other vehicles that show it. So I just uh, went with, uh, you know, what I thought kind of makes sense and, you know, what would be field expedient. Just uh, taking a couple of pieces of angle iron and welding them on the current rack. And the uh, grousers themselves will fit nicely on there and approximately approximate what they look like on the uh, on the vehicle. They stick they stick out kind of far, but that's the way it looks in the photograph. So I'm just hoping that that's uh, that's kind of what it uh, kind of what it is. Um, whoops. So that's what it looks like. Is it right? I don't know. I don't know. However, I'm willing to risk it. So anyway, that's what I've come up with. So I'm going to do the other side and start uh, gluing these grousers into place and move on from there. Okay, I got the grousers installed. Matching the quantity on this side, I put on both sides. So as you can see, it um, looks pretty good. Uh, and just, you know, as a guesstimate on how they actually did it, it looks pretty decent. So I'm stoked with it and the uh, the Shapeways 3D printed grousers are really very nice. I like them and I would recommend them. Um, so the next part 
I need to work on is the um, the rack for the back. And once I get the rack completed, um, I should be uh, I should be able to um, start actually priming priming the components and then working on paint. But I need to build this rack first. So looking at the back or looking at the rack, I need to figure out how it would be installed on here that makes sense. So in looking here and where this this corner um, of the upright of the rack itself in looking at that and where it's located between these two uh, supplemental armor bolt fasteners it looks like it should be somewhere in here now I have uh, in this book I have another photograph of the rack in the back so you know this is where multiple multiple um, sources are helpful because you can't see right here but it, it's got to make sense where where it's being put so in looking at this obviously there's a huge gap here and uh, that would allow clearance <coughs> for uh, the gun travel brace and this filler cap here or access uh, cap for whatever fluid goes in that particular um, that particular filler so there's a gap here as evidenced right here now this rack here shows it hangs off it shows that it hangs off the back and it shows that it's in somewhat from the side okay but in looking at my source photo that I'm trying to duplicate um, the rack goes out to the edge and it looks like you know it's back a bit so I am going to assume that this particular rack and and you can also tell um, by the width of the uh, the jerry cans here there's two jerry cans here and a box and that's just about the right size here um, for you know a jerry can a jerry can and a box so it looks like the rack on this particular vehicle doesn't overhang like in the other photograph it only overhangs to here and it comes out to this edge so it covers up this uh, um, keeper for the cable which there is no cable uh, apparent sorry about bumping the camera there fellers and fellettes there is no um, cable apparent on this particular vehicle so there's not I'm not gonna put one on here but um, also keep I have to keep in mind that it needs to make sense because these troops didn't just throw stuff haphazard on their vehicles I mean it looks like it but there is a certain amount of planning because this rack here it looks you know somewhat permanent um, or at least something they would have to cut off because I'm sure it was at least tack welded to the bottom to keep it secure um, probably just welded completely not tack welded because you know that could break off and then this looks like either a strap or some kind of ad hoc type uh, keeper for these cans so uh, looking at that location I am assuming that it would the rack would fit here I'm sorry here and here and the reason I say that is they would still have to be able to access uh, the engine and these other fill points um, so this rack right here obviously is only one jerry can wide which is about right there and then um, they would have to be able to access these hatches so that's why I'm thinking this is just maybe strapped together somehow or roped together or something easily removed to get access to the engine hatch uh, covers the engine covers so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to make a rack here and I'm going to make a rack here and those will be painted along with the rest of the vehicle and I'll weather them a little bit different you know since it was something that was added to the vehicle uh, probably after so you know different materials and stuff like that but that's what I'm going to put on there so using my um, angle iron 
or my angle styrene to represent angle iron, that's what I'm going to make these racks out of. So I'm going to start cutting up some parts and get one of them put together so you can see um, how it's going to fit. Okay, as you can see, I have now uh, got the, the storage racks completed and uh, I placed them in a way that, you know, the crew would be able to open the access uh, hatches for the engine. So uh, basically what I did is using this uh, angle styrene I got from my local hobby shop, um, I made a little uh, template out of a piece of tape. I measured it out using some fuel cans I already put together to make sure uh, it was of the appropriate size and uh, cut the pieces and put them together and as you can see this isn't completely rectangular it's a little bit off you know the uprights the supports are a little bit off um, I could have really spent a lot of time and got it you know perfect or as close to perfect as possible without some kind of a jig but in looking at well, in looking at the photos, this one here, and then more so this one here, you can see that the racks, whoops, got some glare going. Uh, you can see that the racks are not perfectly square and perfectly straight. Um, you know, it's a field expedient modification made for these vehicles. So, you know, just looking at the photos, I'm not thinking they were going to spend a whole lot of time, you know, being real super precise and putting it together. So, you know, mine may be a little bit exaggerated, but, you know, it is scale and I just, you know, I went with a little bit of crookedness just to make it look like what it is, something that was thrown together. And whenever I uh, actually paint these racks up, um, I'm gonna paint. I'm gonna prime them and paint them the base color. But I think what I'm gonna do for the racks is I'm gonna, you know, weather them up differently than the vehicle because you know, made out of scrap, angle iron and stuff like that. It, I doubt it probably wasn't painted the same color as the vehicle. It might have been, but I'm using a little, you know, what they call artistic license in this case to show that it was something that was put on in the field. But. Basically what I did is I used these fuel cans to measure uh, as, as my template to make sure that they fit both ways. So I can fit four cans in that direction and I can fit three cans in this direction like that. They fit really well actually, but I got those done so I could... Uh, measure it out, make sure everything fit, and yet also maintain the clearances for the hatches and access points and stuff. So those are done. Now with that done and with the grouser racks and grousers uh, installed, I can now actually move on to prime, priming the vehicle and painting. So I'm going to end this video here. In the next video when I come back, uh, I will actually be doing the uh, primer and paint and start getting all that going, especially on the lower hull, so I can uh, get that assembled. So with that, I'm gonna call this video done. And as always, if you have any questions or comments or suggestions, anything like that, you can post them in the comments below. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll answer those as quickly as I can. So. Thanks for joining me here on Plastic Models by a Regular Dude and Building from a Photograph, and I will see you all next time.